Okay, welcome back to the final video on indices. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at solving algebraic index equation. Sounds a bit scary, but it's just an equation that looks like this. So we have a variable, for example, x, and it's in the power. And we want to try and solve an equation that looks like this, a bit scary, um, but it's actually not too bad. So what we want to do is simplify everything to get it in a simple form as possible and we do that by using the laws of indices that we previously discussed. So the first step, let's look at the left-hand side here. We have a division, so this corresponds to having a negative sign in the index indices. So the left-hand side here, this equals to seven to the power of three x minus x minus two, right? And then we can just distribute this negative sign and collect the terms. Um, so this is gonna be equal to seven to the power of three x minus x, that's two x, and then minus minus two, you have to be careful of the double negative sign, that gives us plus two. And then we have two twos, so we can factor out the two. Okay, so we can write this as two times x plus two. And we can, so we want to get to something that's looking like 49, and we can see that seven squared is actually equal to 49. So now we want to use the law of multiplication um, in reverse to get some 49. So what I mean by this, we can write this as seven squared in brackets raised to the power of x plus two. So this is kind of using the law of multiplication in reverse. We can check this right by multiplying the indices here um, using the law of multiplication. So we have two x, oh, <laughs> no, that is right, yeah? No, I've made a mistake. This two should be a one, sorry about that. Um, and then this two is also a one. Okay, so that's right. We can check by multiplying out um, the indices here. So we have two x plus two and two x plus two here. Okay, so that's right. And now we know that seven squared is equal to 49, right? So we have 49 raised to the power of x plus one. Okay, so now we've got this isn't very clear, but we've now got 49s on both sides of the equation. So let me just write this out again, what this means. We have 49 raised to the power of x plus one, and we have that this equals one over 49. So this is all that's working here. Um, so now we want to get everything into the same base. We want base 49, right? We can write 49, one over 49. So this is the same as 49 to the power of minus one. Uh, just flipping the fraction, that's the same as having something to the power of minus one. And now we see we have, the both sides of the equation, we have 49 as the base, and we have it raised to some exponent. So essentially we're just gonna ignore the, um, the base, and we're just gonna write out what the exponent is. So we have on the left hand side x plus one, and on the right hand side we have this is equal to minus one. If this equation is true, then this equation must be true. So that's our logical reasoning. This equation must hold. And now this is a much simpler equation to solve, right? It's just a linear algebraic equation. And we just subtract one off both sides and we get minus two. So that is our solution. Um, should we just check this is right by subbing it into the original equation? Do I have any more space? Let's just create a box here. So minus two, let's sub it into here. Three times minus two, that's the same as seven to the power of minus six. And then we have a division sign here. And then seven, x minus two, x is minus two. So minus two minus two is the same as uh, minus four. Um, and now we have division sign. So we use the law of subtraction, just using the same method here essentially. And we have minus minus four. So minus six plus four, that is the same as seven to the power of minus two. And indeed, this is one over 49. So this is just kind of a little working out just to make sure this solution is correct. So that's what we want. Okay, now let's do a second example. We'll do two to the power of t all cubed multiplied by four to the power of t minus one equals 16. And now we need to actually think about this a bit more carefully because the numbers we are dealing with, they have, they are different numbers, right? We are, have um, indices with different bases. So we can't use our laws of indices straight away. 
we first need to simplify these numbers to all have the same base. Luckily, 4 and 16 are both powers of 2. So what I mean by this is 4 equals 2 squared and 16 equals 4 times 4, so 2 squared times 2 squared, which is 2 to the power of 4. So we want to substitute these numbers in here to this equation so everything has base 2. So let's do that and we are going to get 2t cubed, I'll just leave this expression here for now, and then we have 4 which is 2 squared raised to the power of t minus 1 and this equals 2 to the power of 4. Okay great, now everything's got base 2 and we can just use our regular laws of indices. So here we have multiplication, right? We can multiply t times 3 and we're going to get 2 to the power of 3t. And this is multiplied again using the law of multiplication. We get 2t times minus 1. This gives us 2t minus 2. And I'm just going to carry on this expression here. We can use the law of addition because we have multiplication. So we can add the, the indices together. Base 2, we have 3t plus 2t minus 2. And now we can just collect the terms and simplify. Um, so we have 2 raised to the power of 5t minus 2. So let me just write out what we have. We have shown that the left hand side equals 2 to the power of 5t minus 2. And the right hand side, which is 16, that's just 2 to the power of 4. So this equals 2 to the power of 4. And now just as before, we just ignore the bases and we compare the exponents, because if we want this equation to be true, the exponents have to be equal. So we just write the indices down, we have 5t minus 2 equals 4. This equation has to hold, and then we have a simple algebraic equation, we just solve this, add 2 to both sides, this equals 6, and then divide by 5, we have t equals 6 over 5. That's our solution. I'm not going to double check it, you can double check it with a calculator if you want, but using this method we've shown, this is the correct solution. Okay, so I've got one final example. We are going to do 9 to the power of y divided by 27 raised to the power of 2y plus 1. And this is going to equal 81. So this um, example is basically going to use pretty much every single law of indice that we've talked about before. So as before, we want to um, write everything to have the same base, so we can use the laws. So one thing they've all got in common is we can write them as a power of 3. So 9 equals 3 squared, 27 is 9 times 3, so that's 3 cubed, 81 is 27 times 3, or you can see it as 9 squared. So in both cases, this is 3 to the power of 4. So now we need to substitute these values in into this equation. And if we do that, we are going to get 3 squared to the power of y divided by 3 cubed to the power of 2y plus 1, and this equals 3 to the power of 4, right? So now everything has the same base, and we can just use the laws of indices. Um, so let's look at the left-hand side first. I hope I've got space on the screen still. Um, the left-hand side, we're going to write this is equal to... Um, we're going to use the multiplication first, right? So we have 3, 2 times y, 3 to the power of 2y. Divide that by 3 to the power of 3. And we can use the law of multiplication again. We multiply 3 by 2y plus 1. This gives us 3 to the power of 6y plus 3. Okay, and now we want to use the law of subtraction because we have a division. So we have 3 to the 2y divided by 3 to the 6y minus plus 3. So we just want to subtract the indices. So we're going to be left with 3 to the power of 2y minus 6y minus 3. And just collecting the terms, this gives us 3 to the power of minus 4y minus 3. Okay, so now the left-hand side equals this, right-hand side equals that. Let me just write it out again so you can see it clearer. We have 3 to the power of minus 4y minus 3. And this equals the right-hand side. 3 to the power of 4. Okay, so this is all our working true. This is true. And just using the same logic as before, if we want this equation to be true, we need the indices to be equal to each other. So we can just write this down. So write this equation down. And we have a simple algebraic equation to solve. We have 
minus 4y, if we add 3 onto both sides, we get 7, and then dividing by minus 4 is going to give us y equals minus 7 divided by 4. And this is our solution. Again, you can check it with a calculator if you, if you want to, but this is the general method to solving a algebraic index equation.